Today we're going to look at a pretty cool functional equation problem from an Azerbaijan team selection test. So the thing here is we've got a function from the positive real numbers to the positive real numbers satisfying the following condition. We have f of f of x plus y equals f of x plus 3x plus y times f of y. And well, interestingly enough, we'll see pretty quickly why we require this positive real numbers as part of our argument. That being said, you might be able to relax this to all real numbers and um, find some sort of other solution as well. Okay, so anyway, let's get into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is prove a little claim. And that claim is that f is not a constant function. And the proof of this claim will go by way of contradiction. So let's suppose, um, by way of contradiction, like I said, that f of x equals some constant c, which is a positive real number, for all x, which is also a positive real number. And now, well, what does that mean? Well, that means if we take f of, well, f of x plus y, then that's going to give us a constant. But I haven't filled that in here because just for the sake of keeping things nice, I'm going to fix x and y equal to something. Let's fix x to be 1 and y to be 2. So that means that f of f of 1 plus 2 must be equal to a constant because f of 1 plus 2 is most definitely a positive real number given that that's not only the domain, but it's also the codomain here. Okay, but then applying our rule, we're gonna be able to pull this apart as f of x, but x is one here, plus three times x, but x is one here again, plus, let's see, that's gonna be two times f of two. Okay, cool. But now we know that f of x is constant for all positive real numbers x. But that means that f of 1 is equal to that constant, and f of 2 is also equal to that constant. So that means here we have 3 times c plus 3 after putting everything together. But now let's observe that that means that negative 2c is equal to 3, meaning that c is equal to negative 3 halves. But I don't really have to tell you that negative 3 halves is not a positive real number. So that's in fact our contradiction. Okay, so now that we know that f is not a constant function, well, let's see what we can do with that. Okay, so, so far we've shown that f is not a constant function. But what does it really mean for f not to be a constant function? Well, it means that there exists two numbers, which I'll call a and b, and they come from the domain, in other words, the positive real numbers, so that the function takes different values on these two numbers. So f of a is not equal to f of b. And now the motivation for what we're going to do next is to somehow apply this rule twice. But to apply this rule twice, that means that we want to maybe build this x so it's of the form f of x plus y, or build this y so it's of the form f of x plus y. Keeping in mind that we've got this fact right here that f of a is not equal to f of b. So in fact, how we'll do that is to look at the following object, and it's going to be f of t plus f of a plus f of b. Okay, and I guess maybe I should put here that what we're doing is we're taking t to be a positive real number and it's really arbitrary. So t at this moment is still a variable, whereas f of a and f of b are just numbers and thus a and b are also just like fixed numbers. They're fixed numbers satisfying this condition right here that we brought into existence by showing that we did not have a constant function there. But now what we'll do is we'll unravel this object using two different methods, well, two different choices of x and y. Okay, 
So let's see, the way that we're gonna unravel it upwards is to first take perhaps x to be equal to a and y to be equal to t plus f of b. So let's maybe point out that that's what's gonna take us from this step that we haven't written to the step that we have written. So like I said, we'll have x equal to a and we'll have y equal to t plus f of b. Okay, then maybe let's put this in an orange box just to show that it goes with this orange arrow. And maybe this orange arrow can go in both directions, just depending on which uh, direction you're using our maybe functional equation here. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna leave us with. So here we're gonna have f of a plus 3a, that's pretty clear, plus, well, we've got y f of y, so that's gonna be t plus f of b times f of t plus f of b. Okay, cool. Then let's see, I've got an extra parenthesis right there that I don't really need. And like I said, our kind of motivation for this solution is to apply our functional equation twice and observe that we can do just that because we've got this t plus f of b inside of our function over there in the extreme uh, right hand side. So let's maybe go ahead and say that that is this green arrow action. And what we'll do here is set, let's see, x equal to f of b, and then y will be equal to t. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna leave us with. So above here, we'll have a bunch of the stuff that's kind of the same. So let's see, we'll have f of a plus 3a and then we'll plus, have plus t uh, plus f of b. And then we're replacing this f of t plus f of b with this kind of thing right here using our functional equation. So we've got x equals b, and then we'll have y equals t. Those are the roles that x and y are playing inside of this uh, function here. So we've got f of t plus f of b. Notice it looks a lot like this but now we can apply this functional equation. What's that gonna give us? Well, a lot of these parts are gonna be the same. Observe that we have f of a plus 3a, that just comes up. And then we have plus t uh, plus f of b. And all of that is gonna be multiplied into, let's see, we'll have uh, f of b here plus 3b and then plus t times f of t. So that's what we've got maybe at the extreme top of our calculation. And now that we've reached the top of this calculation, let's unravel this using different choices for x and y. Okay, and well, what are the choices here? Well, we only really have a couple of uh, possibilities. And here what we'll do is take x equal to b and thus y will be equal to t plus f of a. So we're like reversing the roles of b and a, if you will. So what does that look like? So now we're gonna have all of this is equal to f of b plus 3b plus t plus f of a times f of t plus f of a, great. So again, that's just using our functional equation over here with those two choices. But we've achieved exactly what I said we wanted to again, which is the ability to use our functional equation twice. Now we've got this t plus f of a inside of our function f. So that allows us to, well, like I said, uh, use our functional equation twice, but now here x is equal to a, and what y is equal to t, just like it was up here in the green box. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with way down here. So we get to bring a bunch of stuff down. So we've got f of b plus 3b, and then plus, we have t plus f of a. And then, well, applying our functional equation, we're gonna have something like this. So it'll be f of a plus 3a plus t, times f of t. But now, well, now we can collect terms here. 
but let's see what kind of terms we have on both sides of the equation. So here we've got, well, we've got a term that's just a number. So what's contributing to that? Well, we have our f of a plus 3a, and then our f of b times f of b plus 3b. So that's our number on this top side. And then we've got something that's multiplying into t as well. And that's going to be this t times f of b plus 3b. And then we're going to have something multiplied into t times f of t. That's going to be f of b multiplied into t times f of t. And then we're going to have a t squared f of t with a coefficient of 1. So that's what we get when we multiply all of that out. That being said, we can just collect it into maybe some renamed coefficients. So let's point out here that we're just collecting terms on what I'll call the extreme left and right hand side of this equation. And that'll give us C naught plus C1 times T plus C2 times T times F of T plus T squared times F of T. So that's what we get on the extreme left hand side. And then on the extreme right hand side, we'll have d naught plus d1 t plus d2 t times f of t, and then t squared times f of t. So importantly, whenever we do the expansion, we're going to get uh, t squared times f of t with a coefficient of 1, which means we can cancel it from both sides of the equation. And then furthermore, since we know that f of a is not equal to f of b. Well, and I guess kind of clearly a is also not equal to b. Then that means that we know that c naught and d naught are different. c1 and d1 are different. And c2 and d2 are different. So since those are different, well, we can solve for f of t and we'll know that none of the coefficients involved in the next equation are zero. So, well, like I said, what do we have? We have f of t is equal to a plus b over t with a and b. Well, they're both non-zero. But they're both non-zero by the fact that, like I said, all of those purple underlined things, well, their components on either side of the equation are not equal. But then since our function goes from positive real numbers to positive real numbers, that actually means that these are also positive real numbers. Okay, so we've got what the function looks like, and now we just have to test if it works. So let's see if we can do that. So we just showed that, well, if our function exists, it must have the form f of t equals a plus b over t. And now we either want to show that this kind of thing works for all values of a and b, or find the values of a and b for which this function satisfies this functional equation. But in order to like really get started with that, let's see if we can observe that since we've got this t in the denominator right here and our function is over positive real numbers, kind of makes sense to take the limit as t goes to infinity. That'll isolate this a. So let's observe that. So like I said, we're going to observe that a is the same thing as the limit as t goes to infinity of f of t. But then now that's going to be the same thing as the limit as t goes to infinity of f of t plus f of 1. Because, well, we can add f of 1 into the function right here, and well, if t goes to infinity, that argument is still approaching infinity. But now what we can do is apply our functional equation. And the functional equation is where x is equal to 1 and y is equal to t kind of clearly. So that's going to give us this limit as t goes to infinity of, well, let's see, we'll have f of 1 plus 3 times 1, which is kind of clearly equal to 3, and then plus t times f of t. But now let's observe that that's going to be equal to f of 1 plus 3 plus the limit as t goes to infinity of, 
Well, let's see, it's gonna be a times t plus b, given the fact that we know that f of t has that form. But now, notice that we know that a is a positive real number, but since a is a positive real number, that this limit is pretty clearly infinite. But infinity is not a positive real number, so that means that, well, a cannot be a positive real number. But earlier we said that it had to be a positive real number, which is a contradiction. So we have a contradiction, and what did we contradict? Well, we just contradicted that the function had to be of this form. But we earlier showed that the function had to be of that form. So in the end, that means that, well, the answer to this, the answer to find all functions satisfying this condition is, well, there are no functions. And that's a good place to stop.